that might be a little slower, just like that. Okay. Awesome. In the last tutorial, we created some rooms that are added in via our scene. And what we want to do today is we actually want to go ahead and create a camera that updates based on what room we're in. So let's get right into it. Alrighty, so I'm going to go back into the scripts and I'm going to create a camera controller. Okay, so camera controller. And if we open it up, uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a singleton of this as well. So public static um, camera controller, and I'm going to call it instance. Okay. And we also want to create a public reference to our room. And I'm going to call that current room. Okay. And I'm going to have a float, which is going to say, well, how fast are we going to move our camera? So movement, move speed, okay, when room change, okay. Now, we need to make an awake method, so void awake, and in here we're going to set instance equal to this, okay. Now, in our update, we want to update our position of our camera okay so i'm just going to create a simple method for that and i'm going to define it down here so update position and we're going to check if our current room is null okay if it is we just want to return we don't want to update the position we just leave it where it is so that'll fix any sort of errors that would happen. Now we need to update our uh, position. And to do that, we're going to set a target position. Okay. So I'm going to call it target pause. And I'm going to make it equal to get camera target position. Okay. And... Let's go ahead and uh, make this method. So I'm going to create a vector three and I'm going to call it get camera target position. Easy. Now we also want to just double check if the current room is null, then we can just return. But that's not going to work because we need to just vector three dot zero okay so we're just gonna keep the camera in the um in its initial position um but now we're also going to create a target position within here so target pause is going to equal to current room dot get room center okay and we've already defined this within our room script so right here sweet so we're going to get the room center and then we're going to set our target pause dot z equal to our transform dot position dot z. Okay. And then we're simply just going to return our target position. So once we've returned it um, and we set it in our target pause within our update position, we actually want to change our position. So we can get our transform.position. I'm going to set that equal to a vector three dot move towards. And this is going to be from its current position uh, to the target position. Okay. And this is going to be over time dot delta time multiplied by our uh, move speed when room change. Okay. Sweet. So if we go back into our scene, we add our camera script so we can go camera controller. All we need to do is we need to set a speed. So I guess in binding of Isaac, it's pretty instant. So if I set it to 300, okay. And when we run the game, if I go up here, it should do it instantly, but it doesn't. 
And that's because we don't actually have any way to actually check when we are moving between scenes. So uh, what we can firstly do is we can create a public bool and we're going to check whether we are switching the scene. Okay, so is switching scene. And we're going to return our transform dot position dot equals. Okay. And we're going to get the camera target position. Okay. We want to make sure that equals false. Okay, so it'll return appropriately. Now, within our our room controller, we check whether our room exists, but we want to also update based on when we enter a room. So I can call a public void on player enter room, okay? And we're gonna take in a room and I'm just gonna call it room, okay? Now we can grab our camera controller, camera, controller dot instance dot current room and we can set it to the room okay and then now we will simply set our current room okay current room sorry we'll set our current room to our room okay but there's an issue here. We don't actually have a current room, so it's auto corrected it for me, but that's not what I want. So we need to go ahead and create a current room, okay? So I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna go room, current room, okay? Right here, just before we add our room, after we've registered our room, we wanna do a quick check and we're gonna check whether our loaded rooms dot count is gonna equal to zero, okay? So, if we haven't loaded any rooms at all, we're gonna grab our camera controller dot instance, and we're gonna set its current room to this room, okay? And that should make everyone happy. <laughs> so, the next thing we need to do is actually create some colliders within our room. And once we've done that, we'll be able to uh, call an on trigger enter. So if I just go into, I guess my start. Okay. Now in the room, I want to create some colliders. So we can just grab a box collider 2D. And I'm just going to drag it out. Whoa. We don't want them to overlap. So I'm going to do it slightly smaller. Okay, whoops. All right, so about here is good. So, and we're gonna make sure this is a trigger. So making this a trigger um, will allow us to call our on trigger enter uh, 2D method that we've used before, um, but we haven't actually created it yet. So. I'm just gonna quickly add uh, one of these to our empty room, okay? So we can walk through and test with these rooms as well, cause we don't wanna be um, not walking in the room at all, okay? Awesome. So if we go into our room code, uh, down the bottom, we can just simply create a void on trigger enter 2d okay and we can grab a collider 2d i'm just going to call it other we're going to check if the collider oops not collider if other dot tag is equal to player okay so if our player collides with our room then we're going to set our room controller dot instance dot on player enter room. Okay, so that should handle updating the camera. So if we now go ahead, go back into our main scene and we press play, we should have the rooms loaded up. Perfect and awesome. So it switches very quickly. 
So you might want to play around with these values. So we put it to like 100. That might be a little slower, just like that. Okay. Awesome. Now, I know this was a short video, but I'm just going to stop it here. And in the next tutorial, we're going to go over actually creating our procedural algorithm. So that might take one or two more tutorials. And because it's quite, oh, it's not exactly complex, but it's a bit hard to wrap your head around at first. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. And uh, be sure to leave a comment with any feedback you may have or any suggestions or any questions. Okay. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.